Eliana. Hello. How's it going? I'm not too bad. How are you doing? Doing well, doing well. Is it just you and me? It looks like we have 13 participants, 14. And there's Dano. Hey, Dano. Hi, Dan. Hi. How's everybody? Doing good, Dan. How are you doing? I figured I'd just skate in here at the last possible minute, right? So uh, for everyone who just logged on, I think you know who I am, Morgan Carey, CEO of Real Estate Webmasters. And we have our great friend, um, Dan Stewart here from Happy Grasshopper. And uh, this week, Dan, Dan and I were talking about um, talking about topics and he gave me a whole series of topics because of course we're in the real estate business and we, we talk about a lot of things about customer engagement and past fear and retention and recruiting and all this sort of stuff. And there was one on there that said lead conversion. And I said, well, how about that one? <laughs> because I think quite <laughs> frankly, um, lead conversion is the number one thing I get asked about, right? And it's probably the number one reason why we've started the Academy, quite frankly, is that we've been filling up these CRMs for years and we've had so many great customers finding different levels of success, um, you know, through their lead follow-up and CRM. But regardless of whether someone is new and whether they, you know, are struggling with lead management or even if they're veterans and they're, you know, converting super high, but still want to get better. It's like the number one topic. And so Dan, I'm really excited to have you uh, continue on with your words that work series. And today uh, give you the floor to talk about lead conversion. So without further ado, Dan Stewart. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you. And hello, everyone. I can't tell you how much it means to be invited to participate in the REW Academy. Um, you know, my company is 10 years old, and in that time, I've had the privilege of not just serving a lot of people, but making a ton of great friends, and so many of them are members of the REW community. So, you know, if you're one of my old friends, hello, I love you, I miss you, I can't wait till we get to hug again. Uh, if we haven't met yet, if we haven't had the privilege of hanging out together, please reach out to me. Definitely say hi on Facebook, reach out on the REW forum. I would love the opportunity to expand my world of great people, and uh, I'm always delighted to have a great chat. So uh, as Morgan said, uh, lead conversion is a hot button topic, you know, particularly for members of the REW community, because you know, if you've got such a great website resource and it's producing all these leads and you see that it's there, well, then the burden kind of shifts, doesn't it? Uh, today, uh, I came here with a very clear agenda and a goal. I need you to rethink the lead conversion process. So we're going to go through a very deliberate five-part conversation today, at the end of which you're going to be so well-equipped to really understand where you need to focus to change the results that you're currently experiencing. So if that sounds cool, give me a giant yes in the chat. I want to see it. I definitely want to see it, so I will wait. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Okay, awesome. I love seeing the yeses come in. Now, we have to start with the data. So if you're taking notes, this is your, your opportunity to go ahead and grab that pen and, and take down your notes and go ahead and say uh, that number one is data. And uh, with your permission, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here, Mr. Carey. Let me get my desktop shared. And I will take some notes here with you. So in the chat, if you guys can confirm that you're seeing a giant black screen right now, that would be awesome. Uh, the very first thing that we're going to talk about is data. And the reason that this is so important to speak about is because if you don't understand the data, you can't understand, you have literally no way of knowing whether or not the results you're getting are great results or horrible results. You just won't know without the data. So uh, NAR does a really good job of publishing data for real estate and they've been running this annual report and the data going back just to 2014 and the data from the most recent report, uh, it's startling in terms of the volume of digital leads that are being generated. So back in 2014, there were approximately 80 million digital leads. Uh, excuse me, in 2014, there were approximately 4 million digital leads generated per year, and there were about four and a half million real estate transactions. 
Uh, last year, we had close to 100 million digital leads generated for just five and a half million real estate transactions. So think about that shift. You know, those of you who've been generating leads and uh, working to convert your leads online over time, you've seen a massive shift in uh, the effectiveness of speed to lead efforts, right? Because back in 2014, 2015, 2016, uh, the leads that were, um, were registering online were much closer to being ready to have a transaction than they are today. So uh, the, the first thing under data that we need to understand is the history, right? So I'm going to just reference that NAR report. You guys all, well, many of you will have the ability to look up that information. Uh, it was approximately uh, 4 million leads to uh, four and a half million transactions. And uh, the most recent year we have about a hundred million leads for five and a half million transactions. So just let that data sink in for a moment. You know, the, the typical lead today, they're not registering just with you, right? Uh, it's not uncommon to see a single lead register with eight to 10 agents. So think about what these people are seeing. Imagine you're a lead today. Uh, what's happening? If you're a buyer and you're searching for real estate and you register on more than one website, you're very likely getting search alert updates, price change alerts from more than one source. And the net effect is that to the buyer, it starts to all look the same right? It's hard to tell the difference between agent A, B, C, D, E, and F, G uh, when the data that's coming from that agent is more or less all the same data, right? That's a challenge that uh, we have to work to overcome. And uh, today, part of my goal is to help you overcome that uh, by helping you understand the data. So uh, all of this, we're going to review these five parts together. It's all going to lead up to a clear understanding. So this first part, I'm going to go ahead and clear here from the board. Uh, and we're going to move on to the second part. Because the second part is a big problem for a lot of you. Uh, we have got to get really clear about database organization. So database organization is a very important thing to be able to do if you're going to be able to systemize the engagement you create with the leads that you're generating. So, you know, many of you, and, and I work with a lot of you, so I see it firsthand, you end up having so many hundreds or thousands of tags in a database that it gets really difficult to know what to send to those people. So, you know, from a, a, a simple database organization perspective, we want to understand there are only two kinds of people in the world. They know us and they don't. That's it. So your leads are over here in the don't know you category. They have no clue who you are. They have no reason to want to work with you until and unless you give them that reason. So included in every one of your follow-up efforts uh, to convert a lead, you must have a segment of messaging that's designed to teach this person why they should want to choose you as your agent. That's a critical, critical part of the process. So uh, that's the second thing that you've got to have your arms around would be, of course, database organization. And you should absolutely understand that we can't treat a buyer's lead the same way we treat a seller's lead, the same way we treat a dormant lead that registered with us three years ago, uh, the same way that we treat a referral from a past client or friend. So uh, I'd like each of you to be thinking about the different ways that you're currently attracting and converting business and just establish each of those as a swim lane that needs its own methodology for communication. Right, So being organized here is going to pay dividends to you over time. Um, so again, I'm going to clear this section out and we're going to move into the third. And the third is intent. Oh, this is so important. 
If I'm on Facebook, I probably didn't go to Facebook because I wanted to search for a house, right? If I go to one of the portals, maybe I wanted to search for a house. Maybe I'm just curious. Um, if I'm browsing your real estate webmaster's website, uh, and I'm allowed to look at a certain number of pictures before I get the force registration, is my intent to really commit to buying a home right now or selling a home right now? Uh, or was my intent really, I just wanted to see more pictures of this home. Um, so, you know, as you'll certainly have had the experience of, you will have people enter your database through forced registration that really aren't current viable leads. Um, and, and that brings up really a second conversation that we should have. Uh, the viability of a lead is really determined by two things. Uh, first, it's the accuracy of the information. If they've registered with false information, that's not a viable lead. If they've registered with accurate information, they don't have to be ready to transact near term. If you have good contact information and your first goal is to build a relationship with them, every lead is a viable lead, okay? So if you take nothing else away from today, there is so much value in just that one statement because your internal mindset shift from, is this person ready to buy or sell now to how can I serve this person? How can I build a relationship with them? How can I have a conversation with them so that they decide I'm the person they wanna work with over time? Truly, truly important thing to do. So uh, intent is a super, super important issue because uh, you may have lead sources where intent is much more near term uh, than long term. And your response strategy needs to be based on their intent. Uh, if you're running Facebook ads and you have people entering there, uh, in my experience, catching and nurturing millions and millions upon millions of real estate leads, uh, those are the slowest to convert. Whereas if somebody is entering search and they're searching for a home for sale in your area or houses for sale in a specific geography, and then they're looking at multiple sites, uh, multiple houses, they're registering on your site. That is a much more demonstrable intent of their willingness to transact uh, on a near-term uh, near term basis. So uh, I see a question here from Stuart. We're gonna answer these as we go. Do you support forced versus non-forced? Um, okay, Morgan's saying uh, answers to questions at the end. So we'll, we'll get to that later. I will definitely answer that question. Now, uh, we're gonna clear out number three here and we're gonna talk about number four. Number four is the response model. <laughs> uh, I can write, I promise. I can even spell a little bit sometimes. So your response model, you, you may never have heard those words before. What the heck is Dan talking about with a response model? Well, you may be doing round robin. You may have a pond. You may have uh, ISAs, right? You may be solo, trying to do it all yourself. You may have a third party ISA company. Uh, there's all sorts of different response models that you can engage uh, when you have leads that register. And all four of these things that we're covering are absolutely critical for you to have thought through. Uh, otherwise, you're literally taking cash that you'd invest in lead generation and you're throwing it on the fire, right? So if you're watching this right now and you're going, oh my gosh, I haven't thought of these things. I'm not sure what I need to do. You're absolutely in the right place because today's mission is about preparing you to know what to do uh, so that you can convert more of the leads that you're generating, okay? So response model, uh, round robin. Uh, we have many clients who are um, distributing leads as they're captured, just, oh, this person got one, that person gets one, just tink, 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 right through the list. Other people are distributing them uh, geographically. Other people are saying it's a free for all. All the leads are here. You can reach in and grab them, agents. Um, you know, some have a team of ISAs who are dedicated to doing nothing but responding to inbound leads and making outbound prospecting calls to generate business. Uh, 
Um, and yet, you know, a lot of people before they even get there, they have to have to have to master the solo game, right? Because until you're in a place where you're confident in your ability to attract and convert leads, your business isn't truly scalable. I think one of the reasons I'm such a fan of real estate webmasters, uh, one of the reasons I have so many friends in the community is because this is a community of business owners, right? This Ted, Morgan, correct me if I'm wrong, you can slap my wrist later, but uh, you know, having attended multiple REW summits, you know, having been uh, in a relationship and engagement with you guys all these years, uh, I have seen in my experience that most of your clients are not dabblers. They are legitimate business people who happen to be in the business of transacting real estate. So, you know, if you're in the business of building an absolute bulletproof business, you must, must, must master lead conversion. And until you've got one, two, three, and four knocked out, guess what? Number five shouldn't even get a moment's attention from you because number five is 100% dependent on the work you've done in the first four areas. And number five is really what Words at Work is all about. Number five is content. So I'll give you an example. Uh, if you get a lead right now, what do you say to it? Hopefully your brain is saying it depends. That's the right answer. It depends. Okay. So I'll give you an example. One of my favorite things to do with inbound leads is to send a text message that's irresistible for people to respond to. The text is so simple. It says, is this first name? Super, super simple. And as simple as that is, as effective as that is, it is absolutely the wrong thing to do if you don't have yourself or someone else available to respond when they reply. Okay, That's why the context of steps one through four are really so important for us to get our arms around before we even begin uh, to broach the subject of number five. Now, when it comes to content, that's where we have to be really deliberate. We have to understand uh, all of these things that we've talked about, the data, the organization, all this makes sense. Now it's time to engage the lead in a way that's going to likely lead them to convert over the time frame that we expect to be working the lead. So uh, let's be real clear about this. What agent wants, what agents want are people who buy now. Of course, you want to work with everybody who's ready to buy, sell, or invest today. That is your dream. And yet the client, they always buy, sell, or invest on their time frame. They're in charge of that. And no matter how effective your content is, no matter how charming you are, no matter how convincing you are, uh, it's really hard to get someone to buy, sell, or invest in real estate before they're ready to. So... You know, what I would encourage you to do is adopt a response model that takes into consideration the time frame between when they register and when they're likely to actually transact. So I'll sketch this out for you so you have a good idea. Uh, when a lead is first generated, it's just, it's just been arrived. They've just registered on an REW site. That lead needs to be acknowledged first. Eh. acknowledged. <laughs> I promise that's what that word says. Uh, an acknowledgement message for a lead should be designed to, to set expectations of ongoing communication. It should be designed to get a response from people who are near term, right? Those are the two goals of an acknowledgement message. Well, we don't just send one message and then stop, of course, right? So after the acknowledgement messaging goes out, it's time to move into the positioning phase. And positioning is absolutely critical for helping this person, this lead that you don't yet have a relationship with to go, huh, you might be the person I wanna work with on this transaction, right? So to do that, you have to essentially teach the lead 
what your past clients and sphere already know about you. So remember earlier we talked about uh, database organization, how important it is. This is why. Uh, those of you who have past clients and sphere, you probably see uh, the majority of your business comes from recommendations, referrals from those people. Well, what if we could get those people to share what they love about you with these new leads as they're coming in? You know, that would be a really helpful thing to be able to do. And uh, to do that, we have to engage this lead's brain using the power of story. There's so many systems that really just deliver platitudes. You know, you should work with me because I'm a true professional and I really care and I treat everyone like family. Hmm. Any agent can send that and it means absolutely nothing, right? If you want to really engage them and help them understand why they should hire you, use the power of story to tell them about a time where you demonstrated treating someone like family, where you demonstrated your true professionalism. You know, essentially uh, your content has to do three things here. It has to first capture their attention. That's number one, because if you don't have that, you can't communicate anything of value. They have to be engaged. Uh, second, it should tell them something about you that's meaningful. And third, it should tell them specifically what that means for them. Very, very, very important to understand that. So if we don't do the first thing first, we don't get to the second parts there. So um, I am going to uh, go on here to the next phase. So we've now positioned ourselves, right? It's time to nurture. And nurturing a lead over the long term uh, is so valuable for you to be able to do. So let me call these out here for you in a little bit more clarity. Uh, we got the acknowledgement phase, the positioning phase, and the nurturing phase. So when you have effective uh, acknowledgement con uh, content, you get more initial response. Whoops. When you have uh, effective positioning content, uh, you get more midterm response, which I won't bother writing out. And then, of course, nurturing with the long term. It's all about converting those leads that have been sitting in your database forever. So what most agents are expecting is I'll spend money on leads and then I'll send a message and they'll buy. Like that's the big hope. And the reality is the majority of leads that are generated are not ready to buy at the time you get their information. Uh, our data shows that the typical new real estate lead is first registering eight to 12 months before they're ready to speak with an agent. Uh, we have a ton of clients who are converting leads that have been in their database for years. In fact, I just talked to someone yesterday who converted someone who's been getting their messaging for seven years. Okay, so most of you will not bother following up with someone like the data. I say most of you, I don't mean you specifically, but according to NAR, most agents give up after one and a half phone calls and two emails. So those of you who have a real thorough lead conversion strategy, you're head and shoulders above your competition. And that's a very safe place to be because once you can confidently invest dollars in leads, and know that you'll have the ability to convert them, you have a scalable business. That's when you get to transition from being that solo practitioner to uh, building a team, expanding the size of that team, really growing the organization. And you know, just looking into the REW community, there's so many great examples of people who've done exactly that. So I would uh, strongly encourage you to consider the value of having a good, well thought out lead conversion strategy. So again, three phases, leads are first acknowledged. Uh, that's where you're setting expectations of ongoing communication. That is where you are, and it's just occurring to me that I have something on screen. I can probably show you this a little bit better. So I'll stop my screen share here uh, and I'll pull that up for you in just a moment. Um, Oh, 
Okay. So I'm going to share this for you again. We'll break this down. So in your database right now today, you very likely have a bunch of people who need re-engagement. These would be old leads, people in your sphere who haven't heard from you in a while. Uh, it could even be other agents or you know the vendors that you're constantly referring. Uh, sending messaging to that group of people is a very effective way for you to generate new business now. Um, you know, when new leads come in and they're acknowledged appropriately, that acknowledgement should consider the time of day that they've registered and the lead source. Uh, in other words, you don't want to treat that 2 a.m. Web, web registration the same way you treat a 10 a.m. web registration. Uh, you need to have a different follow-up uh, follow action there. Uh, positioning is where you stay out and nurturing never really stops. Once they're getting that messaging from you, they should always be getting that kind of messaging. Now, uh, those of you who are clients of Real Estate Webmasters, uh, you probably know that we have created a bunch of great content for you that's available uh, through Real Estate Webmasters. So Morgan may talk a bit about more uh, when that will be available inside your sites. Um, my desire in sharing this with you is that uh, we want you to be prepared to adopt the right mindset with these leads that are generated. Um, you know, whether this person wants to buy or sell or invest, whether this person wants to do that today or 10 years from now, uh, every single human being has to live somewhere. And they all know someone who's thinking of buying or selling or investing. So if you can treat each of these new opportunities uh, called leads, right, as a way to build a relationship with someone, you're in a much, much more powerful footing to convert them uh, than you would be if you were only interested in, you know, quick getting in the car and showing them houses or quick making the listing appointment. So, uh, Rob, and I see that I will put that up here for you again. She's asking me to share this slide one more time. So I'll do that. Um, the, the, I, I want to give you some examples of these types of messaging too. So, uh, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I'll just give you a moment to grab this here and, and I just suggest you screenshot it and also recognize that this is recorded. It will be available in REW Academy. So uh, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to share with you an example of an email that's an acknowledgement message. So, you know, this is a very simple, short message. It seems really simple. It doesn't seem like you'd have to be much of a great writer to create this kind of message. And truly, you would not have to be. Uh, it's interesting that the data that's created this message, um, what it tells us. So in our studies, in our tests, we've seen that if we set expectations that you'll be calling uh, twice, not just once, but twice, followed by a phone number, not once, but twice, uh, and uh, we ask a question that's in their best interest to answer, uh, you'll get a better result. So. Uh, I've seen where agents might send a message that asks if they've met with a lender yet or if they're ready to look at homes this weekend. Uh, those messages test more poorly in terms of generating that conversation for you than a message like this one would. So uh, I'd like to also be clear what's happening with this approach. Uh, this message is setting expectations of future follow-up action. She's going to stay in touch, right? Well, it's not really her who's doing it. It can be the automation that does it. So one of my favorite things to do with lead conversion, like uh, I gave you the example before of is this first name is a text response to a new lead. Well, what if you're a solo agent and you know for sure you can't be there every moment of the day to engage when they reply? Well, that's where you, you do something smart. Like you, you have an automatic text go out that says, um, uh, it's me, Dan. Uh, I'm in a meeting. I'll, I'll make, uh, it's me, Dan. I'm in a meeting. I'll call you later today. Something simple like that. We're setting expectations of calling. And then instead of actually making the call, you can send a ringless voicemail drop. So that gets triggered to be sent automatically. Uh, that sort of one, two punch approach where we're saying what's going to happen. And then we're following up with something that's fully automated. Uh, 
that's that's a sequence that builds trust. You're demonstrating that you do the types of things that most people don't, right? I mean, I don't know if any of you can relate to being on the consumer side, but uh, you're not the only people who are suffering from lead fatigue. Understand that. You know, if, if I'm a buyer today and I've registered on 10 agent sites, I've done that because I didn't get great service from all those, those folks in the beginning. You know, people want to be well served. And if you can actually reach out in a friendly way, set those expectations, send content that's in alignment with the reality of the experience of working with you, you're going to convert a lot more leads, a lot more. So uh, I'm just I'm looking at the chat here. I see a bunch of things are caught up there. Um, Morgan, I'll let you guide me as far as when you'd like me to answer these questions. Uh, certainly happy to do that whenever you're ready. Um, but let's talk a bit more about content, right? This segment is called words that work for a reason. So I want to share with you some strategies that you can adopt, uh, within the campaign content that we've created for real estate webmasters, uh, as well as the things you can do to enhance that content on your own. So I'm going to give you a few examples. Uh, so far I've talked about the acknowledgement phase. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about the positioning phase. So positioning, the more knowledge you have about the lead source, the better job you can do positioning yourself. So uh, I'll give you an example. I have a member who's part of the ExxonMobil corporate relocation program. So we know that this is an executive or an oil and gas engineer that's being moved by a big company. Uh, the way that this functions is they basically say, here's a uh, uh, we'll give your information to a bunch of agents, pick one. And so, you know, understanding this, uh, we chose to create a message that spoke in the language of the people we were writing to. Uh, we used words that made sense to an engineer that we wouldn't use for just a general population message. And we showed where that content approach allowed our member to win approximately 30% more of those leads than they had been previously. That was huge. Uh, there may be some of you who are looking to shift up market. Like, hmm, I, I'm thinking of a member who, uh, it's such a great story. I love this story because uh, we go through this process where we interview people and actually get to know them. And when we were working with her, she said her goal was to shift up market. She wanted to sell a lot more waterfront property. And so we had a conversation with her about what she knows about waterfront property. And she said, are you kidding? Everything. I grew up here. I've been fishing here with my grandfather and my dad since I was a girl. I know the lakes inside now. And I know absolutely everything about fishing here. And we thought, well, why not tell parts of that story in her long-term nurturing campaign? Right? So now we're sharing with people that are registering with leads that this is someone who uh, really knows stuff about things they're interested in. Uh, essentially, what we're doing is we're aligning her goal to advance, have more GCI through shifting up market with the interest of the people she's trying to compete. So, you know, if you're in a, a beachside market and you happen to surf, is it reasonable that, you know, there might be a bunch of buyers out there that you would share that affinity with? Of course. So during the nurturing phase, I'm going to encourage you to think about sharing how you're uniquely connected to the communities that you serve. So I, I had a call earlier with a client in, um, in a little town in Minnesota, like super awesome guy. And he was telling me about how uh, his family has a cabin way out in the woods and uh, there was a fishing guide, like one of his uh, forefathers, great grandfather or something. And, and like all these old stories, right? You have unique, interesting things that you've experienced in your life too. And when you share those in interesting ways, you can create conversations with the leads that you've generated. Okay, so are you ready for the secret? <laughs> this is so bizarre. It's so amazing. This is the one thing that will create more conversations with you, with your leads than anything else I've ever come across 
in 10 years of serving real estate professionals. So it's this simple. This is the magic formula. If you want to convert more leads, this is what you must, must, must do. You have to raise their curiosity and leave it unresolved. Raise their curiosity and leave it unresolved. That's what creates engagement. Uh, I see a lot of agents who, and, you know, and you'll see this too, Morgan, where they will hammer that database, hammer those leads with all sorts of market data. And that feels good to an agent because, you know, we're professional agents. We really care about that. We know our stuff. We're demonstrating we know our stuff. Like it feels great to be able to do that. And yet if you're that reader who's interested in buying, selling, or investing in real estate, you've now got all your questions answered. You don't really need to talk to that agent. And if that person is months away from converting, uh, you need every opportunity to have a relationship with them that you can create. And of course, those relationships only exist inside conversation. So, you know, you know, Dan, I'm, I'm going to jump in here on this one because I saw there was a, a gentleman, um, I think it's John Forget, who's on here. And uh, we were talking about, um, this is a real life sort of um, study on this. And that is, um, we're talking about putting everything on the MLS on the mm -hmm. website. And I had said why I actually, you know, I don't want the order for a bunch of reasons. But number one is um, you cannot answer. You can't give them everything, especially if you're not going to have registration turned on because then they don't mm. have reason to call you, right? And it was something about like whether that was, does it have an elevator or HOA dues or whatever something is that, you know, is available in some properties, but not others. And that's what people don't understand about the whole data thing. Right. Is that, yeah, you could theoretically spend hundreds of thousands of dollars mapping all 500 fields in the MLS that are usually not even entered and probably going to give the user a bad experience. But if you leave it off, there's a benefit. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's funny because it's a, it's a programmatic decision that does exactly the same thing. Right. Is that you want yeah. to give them so much that they find you valuable, but you want to take you want to leave a few things off the table. You got to leave them wanting more. Right? right. Does yeah, this absolutely. thing have an elevator? What are the HOA dues? Is it, you know, the other example mm -hmm. I think he used was pet friendly, right? Like leave them off your website. Mm -hmm. Your website should be as good or better than any other website that you're competing about against in the search engines, right? But you don't want to spend all that extra money and time giving them every answer because you're actually investing yourself out of a conversation. Right. It, it, I mean, I've had the experience of uh, talking with an agent who, um, and you guys have seen this. I mean, I know this exists. Uh, I'm thinking of an REW member who's a client of mine who is telling me that they've discovered other agents are coming to their site to get information to share with their clients. Like, you know, there's a point where you're providing so much data that uh, it can make sense to step back a little bit from that. Um, right, for yeah. sure. And interestingly, though, the bar is so low you can provide more than everybody else and still leave lots off the table, right? You yeah, don't have to, there's... if you need three more things than someone else, then don't buy 50 more things, right? Yeah, that's right. It's the two millimeter rule. Have you ever heard this? this um, is a fascinating no. <laughs> study. So like, if you think about the best plastic surgeons in the world, okay. you know, the, the fastest runners, the, you know, when you're, you're producing at a very high level, the difference between first place and second place isn't usually miles, right? It's like two millimeters. It's a right. really small difference. So you don't have to be eons better. You have to be just a little bit better. And if you strive to consistently get a little bit better over time, it can lead to large advantages. Right. Um, that's awesome. So yeah, I, I think that's a good point. And you triggered something else in me that I'd like to share because um, you're a really good example of this, Morgan. Can you, you don't mind if I pull this back to the personal, but would you hold up your right arm for us? My right arm? Like, yeah, yeah the I'll one with that. the sleeve on it. Come on, there we go. Sure. Yeah. So one thing that I love about Morgan is he's Morgan. Bam. There's no other Morgan. There's no, this Morgan at a meeting is different than this Morgan having drinks afterwards is different as the Morgan we're seeing right now. 
uh, you are a very good representative of planting your flag and saying, this is who I am. Love me or leave me. Like, totally fine. And I think, you know, one of the things we see agents struggle with is planting that flag and saying, it's okay. I don't need to serve everyone. I need to really attract the people that are a joy to work with and do a great job with those people instead of trying to like you know, modify who you are to serve such a huge variety of clients. I think uh, there's so much room when you consider lead conversion to attract people, to just magnetize them to you when you really embrace who you are and include that in part of your messaging. Uh, in short, let them get to know you, like show off your sleeve, get a get that out there just be who you are it's a good thing i'm just glad you didn't ask me to show you my pants um <laughs> <laughs> um but, uh, no uh so we have eliana i think has a bunch of questions um uh, eliana there she is we got our camera working hey uh, what's going on so guys just uh, as a reminder uh we introduced eliana last week eliana is the administrator for rew academy and uh, she is also um, our, our videographer and on our marketing team. And you may or may not have met her in the past at one of our shows. And when Canada ever lets us out of Canada again, looking forward to meeting you guys again. But this is Eliana. She's going to uh, share some of the questions from, uh, from up, awesome. up above. Awesome. Thanks, Morgan. Yeah, so I've noted down a couple of questions here. First one is from Stuart Neal. He mentioned... Do you support forced or non-forced registration? Ah, uh, that is such a subjective choice. Uh, I think if you have the right follow-up strategy in place, absolutely do the forced registration and grow that database. Um, and yet also understand that if you expect to convert a lot of those leads and you're really hammering them with a lot of messaging and you don't press pause at some point in time, you're gonna run into deliverability issues. Uh, you'll have spam problems, you'll have complaints. So uh, forced registration is my preference with the right follow-up strategy in place. Yeah, and I can share some data on that um, in terms of what we looked at at Real Estate Webmaster. So it's an almost 10 to one when it comes to lead volume, right? And so basically if you turn forced registration on versus non-forced registration, you'll get about 10 times as many leads, right? It's quite significant. Right, but the um, the trade off is is the, in the intent, right? That Dan was talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Forced registration, a portion of those people are in the I want to buy right now. Acknowledge me. Let's go. A portion of them are in the I want to buy in six to twelve months, and a portion of them are never, right? And so the um, conversion rate of you know um, the forced registration lead is going to be lower because there's lower intent or there's lower guaranteed intent. And if you think about that for a second, if you provide almost everything, but you leave some things unresolved and you don't have forced registration on, the only reason they are going to give you their contact information is because they volunteered it, right? So they inquired on a specific property because they had a specific question. And so the intent goes up by at least double, Yeah. right? And so here's how that math works though, guys. If they're twice as good, but you get 10 times as many with the bad ones, you actually net out at five times more, more good leads on forced registration, even though you have twice as many bad conversations, right? <laughs> and so it's important, but also like use 10 and 100 for easy math. If it's a 10, if it's a factor of 10, it costs you $100 to talk to very high intent people or $10 to be able to market to everybody, mm. right? And so you need to think about that based on how much time you have available and whether or not your objectives are to have everybody, like if you want all just deals right now, you'd rather pay for more for them and have good conversations then turn forced registration off or, or, or play with a, a version of forced registration where you can allow them to X out or after a certain amount of use. But if you're looking to invest in what Dan's talking about here and building out the programs so that you can get those leads three, six, nine, 12, seven years, um, then you need to do forced registration because it's about building a huge database that the system will identify the intent, the content will identify the intent, intent and make sure they touch the people at the right time. That That's right. And, and also along the way, 
uh, with the right content choices, you can generate near-term business from those folks. It might not be their direct transaction, but almost everybody always knows somebody who's thinking of moving. So if you're setting expectations in the content that you're really there to serve them and they believe it, they're much more likely to make a referral for you, even though they haven't worked with you directly yet. So, so Michelle has a, has a plug question. She says, um, I'm struggling putting together a lead follow-up strategy. Would you recommend hiring a follow-up company? So Michelle, if um, I'll, I'm gonna give Dan a plug here in a second, um, but I'm gonna give REW a plug first. If you're already an REW customer, we absolutely recommend hiring Happy Grasshopper, but we already did. So the first step actually is we'll be pushing some new content that we've paid Dan and his group to the REW platform in the coming weeks here. There was a question about when you're gonna get that content earlier. All we're doing is trying to figure out how to programmatically just insert it a couple mm -hmm. weeks away. You will get all of what Dan and I have put together. Um, you know, we've been talking a lot about this stuff, going back and forth on this content. You'll get that automatically. That's a great free place to start. There's no charge. Real Estate Webmasters is taking care of it. However, if you've done the basics and you're getting good results, which we hope you do, right? If you want to take that next step, that's when you hire Dan, right? So you reach out to Happy Grasshopper. If you want to get to the 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 you know the voiceless email drops and a lot of that automation and stuff. Mm -hmm. If you think about kind of a crawl, walk, run strategy, crawl is just start, don't, don't start by trying to hire somebody right away if you're not doing the basics. If you are not subscribing people, putting in the groups in the CRM and actually turning on your, your basics, no need to hire anyone yet because the problem is you, right? You haven't, you haven't stepped up and started pushing the buttons. Start pushing the buttons first. But once it starts paying dividends and you're ready to sort of add some rocket fuel, that's why Dan exists. Yeah, definitely what we're here for. Thank you for the plug, Morgan. I appreciate that. Um, wow. I, I think it's a good opportunity to clarify, like what would the difference be between the content we've created for real estate webmasters and the content we might create for you if we were engaged separately? And the difference is you. So we would interview you to make sure that we're really telling your story in the content and that we're aligning everything to help you achieve your specific goals. That's a, that's a good point for us to be able to give it to everyone. It has to be somewhat generic. So it's better than it's better than people's no content, but nothing is better than personalized content. Shannon asks, how do we get the content working on our site when it becomes live? Shannon, um, we have uh, an REW Academy um, for uh, like learning how to use the system itself. It's very simple to get someone um, on a drip campaign. For instance, you just add them to a group. So we'll be pushing all of the groups and we'll be pushing all of the content for you. And it is very likely that Dan and I will jump on one of these sessions and actually do a walkthrough specific to the REW CRM to show you how to turn all the buttons on once it's in there. So I think it's a couple of weeks away. Awesome. Yeah, all right, Eliana, who else we got for questions? What do we got? Right, we've actually got you. You've raised a question um, earlier in the session. You mm -hmm. asked, REW advocates 2% mostly to set low expectations of performance, knowing many folks are not yet organized or at expert level of lead follow-up. What is the range of conversion you see from raw web leads to deals? It's a, it's a big question, right? And, and here's the thing, the, the conversion always happens inside the conversation that you're having with the lead. So really what we, if we're going to measure anything and it's going to be a value, it shouldn't be, did they close or not? It should be, did you have the opportunity to have a conversation with them to win that business? So that's a metric that we're measuring very closely. And it's going to vary based on a lot of different things. So let me give you a few breakdowns. Um, currently, we use Happy Grasshopper for Happy Grasshopper. And we have a team of sales development reps, which just think ISAs, same thing, right? And we're making outbound texts to dormant leads, people who registered with us years and years ago and never did anything. So it's a very cold outbound approach to these people. We're sending text messages in batches of just a 30, just 30 people at a time. And we're seeing an 80% reply rate, okay? Holy shit. So are we going to go from that reply to having a brand new member? Absolutely not. 
what we're going to do is have the chance to have a conversation to see if there's anything we can actually help them with now. Right. So, um, you know, there's, there's one, uh, I covered acknowledge, position, nurture. I want you to think of a whole separate type of message I call a spank message. <laughs> right. So downloading a spank message is where you're literally like slap that database, say once every 90 days to shake out those old dormant dead leads that just aren't doing anything. You know, if you've got a lead that registered three, four, five years ago, and you're messaging them every week, they're just going to ignore everything that you do. Like give them a chance to engage. Then after a period of time, we say about a year, switch to once every 90 days and, and send a message to them that would re-engage. Again, I think that's actually the next question. James Deloney is asking, what is a great question and or content, I suppose, to re-engage that old lead who's returned to the site after, say, three more months or more? I'm going to show you one. How about that? How about that? Let's do this. So this is an example of a re-engagement email. Right? And, you know, I'll give the audience a moment to read that. It's a simple message. This is not puppies and kittens, right? <laughs> we're, not, we're not sending rainbows. We're not making people laugh or smile in this particular message. We're just giving them a chance to jump back in our database. And I'll show you the data on this particular send. Uh, Brent Daly has a team in Mansfield, Texas. So they had a bunch of old cold dormant stuff. And you know, for us, we had a relatively low open rate on that send. But we found that of those 10,000 folks that were in there, 17 were ready to transact immediately. So, you know, that's, that's one example of that sort of message. I'll share you a, another one here. This is one of my all-time favorite examples because there's so many lessons. Um, I remember Brenda because she had such a tiny database. She only had like 30 or 40 people that were in it. So... Um, you know, we literally said to her, maybe you should shake out your purse and see what you've got in there. <laughs> she came up with a scrap of paper. Uh, she was in line with someone at Starbucks. She wrote down this person's information. And then you'll notice we didn't use the first name. She actually couldn't remember it and she couldn't read her own handwriting. So we just left it off to be safe. Now, this is a super simple message to re-engage. That's it. Like, it doesn't have to be rocket science. Um, but look at her results here. Uh, small audience, she got a better open rate. Um, she sent the message December 23rd with signing a listing the very next day. So multiple lessons here with this message. I wanna make sure to anchor this for you. Number one, most people would not follow up with the lead 18 months later. Like you meet someone in line at Starbucks, you write down their info and then you don't do anything for a year and a half. You're probably not sending a message to that person. Um, second lesson, most people would say it's December 23rd. I can't send a message now. It's like almost Christmas. Mm, people are together. That's when people have some downtime to actually think about these issues. So the reply Brenda got that was so cool was, uh, it said something like the kids are home from college. My husband have, and I've decided it's finally time to sell our home, right? That was exactly the right time to send that message. And uh, that's why I get so excited because, you know, every single one of you that has people in your database right now, they're all faced with the reality of real estate. They all have to live somewhere. They all know somebody who's thinking of moving. So you will always do better by sending content than choosing not to send. Uh, yeah, I'm just a great example. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a really fun example um, from today because we came out with a new feature. Um, and the feature is, again, from our forums, people asked us to bring back the online now from a previous version of CRM, and we did. And so the online now, a lot of people have said to me, well, I feel like it's a bit creepy to like message someone or call them when they're on the website because they feel like I'm watching them or whatever. And so this is a quote from my wife from today who just recognized this feature. She said, and this is in our chat, our ND chat, oh my God. So I just saw that Ben, insert last name, was online and I called him. Guess what? He just upped his budget to $4 million. 
this CRM is badass, right? A lot of people, the same way they won't call that old lead because they, or they won't send an email to re-engage an old lead. It's the same thing. They won't jump on someone right away because they have this fear that they're going to get judged for reaching out. Oh, I see you're online, right? Don't say that. Just leave that part out. That's the quiet part. You don't have to say out loud. (laughs) Right. It's about the content, right? It's about the content. And, 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 um, but the thing is, is that we never would have known that Ben was upping his budget if we didn't call and ask him, right? So I think all the way back to, I think it was Michelle who asked, you know, having, having struggles with, you know, building a system, the first struggle that everyone has, and hopefully this content and hopefully these, these sessions will help you guys build some confidence is that you're the first problem. You're the first thing, right? You have to hit send. You mm-hmm. have to decide to put someone in a group. You have to pick up the phone. You have to text. You have to do those things. Well, that's you know, the that's, first problem. That, that's a good reminder of, of something that happened with Brent Daly's son. So, you know, 10,000 messages sent out, 17 transactions. There's probably not one person listening to this who wouldn't like that reality. Well, he also had like 270 spam complaints and he actually got some hate mail. Like, are you willing to still get that? to go after the, uh, the 17 transactions? I am, uh, I absolutely am. It's okay if people unsubscribe, that's fine. You don't get a prize for keeping them in your database forever, right? <laughs> you get paid when they buy, sell, or invest in real estate. So, yeah, and remembering that you had forced registration turned on if you were listening to the chat. And so you want the garbage out of your database. Not to call any person garbage, but anyone who's not supposed to be there or anyone doesn't have any intent or whatever, let them. Mm-hmm. They're doing you a favor. They're doing us a favor. They're taking some load off the server. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad thing. I love when people unsubscribe, right? Because it means I won't pay someone to spend time trying to follow up with them. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's, so. it's, yeah. We will never have the time that we spend. We can always earn more money, but there's just no point spending our time trying to work with people who will never be ready. So yeah, don't right. ever mourn that opt out. So there's a question here from Stuart Neal. He says, can we see some metrics for bringing on and affording an ISA, please? Um, Stuart, the first thing I'll say is um, if you have access to the Academy Premium version, you probably want to go back and watch AJ's um, webinars on, you know, setting up the numbers, you know, using an ISA model. Um, Dan, I'm not sure if you have any comments on that, but I can talk to it a little bit. It generally... um, you know, the, the decision to go um, like uh, offshore ISA versus in-house, um, unilaterally, all of our top producers will say in-house, unilaterally, 100%. If you've got the time to invest in training them, if you've got the money to pay their salaries, and AJ, I just had this call with someone else the other day, AJ will say your first three months is going to be low, low. The quality is going to suck and the volume is going to suck. They're going to get better. And, and, and I'm quoting AJ here, the next three to six months, volume's going to get up because they're going to get better, right? But quality is still going to get low and your agents are going to complain even more because they're going to get a bunch of shitty referrals from the ISA. And then the gold happens nine months afterwards. So you really, if you're going to bring an ISA in-house, you really need to be ready to pay that salary. And a good ISA is going to get paid hundred dollars to $150,000 a year. So you need to be prepared for that too. Low base, relatively, $40,000, $50,000 base, but you don't want to have a cap on their earnings because they they get paid per transaction in some way or form or pay for performance. So 100 to 150 grand internally, but you can make it go a lot faster without having to take the responsibility of training by hiring someone like a My Out Desk or a bunch of other external ISA services. Then you don't have to take the responsibility if you don't know what you're doing and it's a lot lower cost but you're probably going to pay like 10 or 20 bucks a lead and you should. The cost is probably exactly the same if you calculate it based on cost per appointment kept. Yeah. Okay. So you might spend a lot more to have a local person who's directly tucked under your wing and doing a really great job. Uh, you may be paying that person a lot more, but when you do the math and break it down by number of quality appointments booked, it's probably the same number. So, uh, you know, you might not have the cash flow. To, uh, to hire that you know, $150,000 person that Morgan mentioned. Uh, and if you don't, that's okay. You, know, you can start with the offshore ISA. There are some really good uh, people, but 
you need a process to sift through. Don't just hire anyone. Hire someone you'd really be proud of uh, and then invest in them just as if they were working locally. And hire a coach like AJ who's done it before if you haven't done it because, yeah, it'll cost you 10, 20, 30,000 bucks, whatever you got to pay to get this thing set up. If you've not done it before, it'll cost you a lot more trying to do it yourself. Um, but uh, yeah, just to clarify, though, I think people should pay their ISAs 150 grand if they're successful, but that's not your commitment, right? Your base is like 50. Yeah. Right. Somewhere. It depends on where you live. Yeah. Right? It's, it's really regional. And in Florida, where I'm based, I would imagine we could get quality ISAs for a 20, 25K base all day long. Oh, yeah. So, well, that, well, we're in Canada, so that is 50. Yeah, everything's more expensive, <laughs> man. Crazy. Yeah. Well, this is great. Guys, we are at time. Uh, Eliana will pop uh, Dan's information down in the bottom again. And again, guys, reminder, use what you got first, right? I'm here to help sell Dan. He's my buddy, and he does a great job. But don't spend the money, and he doesn't want you to either, at Hack the Grasshopper, until you've done the basics first, right? Because it'll really help you understand and appreciate his service when he adds the additive value, right? So use the content we push for you, use the CRMs, join the forums, watch the academy things. And remember, it starts with you. You have to start the process. You have to pick up the phone because Dan's still not gonna pick up the phone for you. Mm -hmm. You have to text, you have to, you know what I mean? Like, and sure, we can automate some of these things to make your life easier, but you will never find success working with customers if you refuse to talk to them. So. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's great closing. Well done, Morgan. All right, Dan. Thank you so much. And again, guys, if anyone is not in the RW Academy Premium, Eliana will reach out 500 bucks a month for great content like this. Dan, AJ, myself, John. Um, and uh, But you get a free 30 days. We hope you spread the word. Um, feel free to drop Dan a, um, a Google review, by the way. Everyone loves five-star Google reviews. Yeah, we do. Um, yeah, I should put that. Feel free to drop Dan a five-star Google review. <laughs> if it's three and a half, just email him directly, please. <laughs> but no, Dan, this is a lot of fun, man. I really appreciate you. And um, we look forward to your next session. Thank you. Take care, everyone. All right. Cheers.